ए प्रेजेंटली ही इज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन एस आई टी सिलिकॉन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी संबलपुर सर विल टेक क्लास ऑन ब्लॉक टू सी एस पी फिफ्टीन दैट इज हैकिंग टेक्निक सो टूडे सर विल टेक क्लास ऑन हैकिंग टेक्निक सो आई यू रिक्वेस्ट सोहन सर टू टेक क्लास ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ओ एस ओ थैंक यू सर आई एम हैंड ओवर द सेशन टू सोहन सर सी एस पी सिक्सटीन ब्लॉक टू ओके थैंक यू सर गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल आई थिंक आई एम ऑडिबल टू ऑल ओके यस सर ऑडिबल ओके लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट सम हैकिंग टेक्निक सम डिमेरिट मेरिट्स व्हाट शुड यू डू और व्हाट व्हाट शुड यू अवॉइड टू सिक्योर आवर सिस्टम सिक्योर आवर नेटवर्क वी हैव डिस्कस समथिंग इन लास्ट क्लास वी आर दैट वाज इन ब्लॉक रजिस्टर्स ओके दैट वाज इन ब्लॉक 1 we are going to discuss about what is in block 2 and it is regarding your <coughs> trojan backdoors virus worms session hijacking what is social engineering denial of service etc we are going to discuss about these topics today okay <coughs> okay at any point of time if anyone has any doubt he can ask me in between the class or in between the session okay ओके सर आपण को कॅमेरा टा कॅमेरा टा ऑन कर दियो तो ताकि टिक्के इंटरेक्टिव लागिवो क्लास टा ओके श्योर 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 ओके ओके थँक यू स्टार्ट इन नथिंग सेशन स्टार्ट इन नथिंग ओके 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 सर ना मैं कॅमेरा आई एम आल्सो बिजी विथ लाइक यस ओके सो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ अटॅक्स इन आवर सिस्टम द कॉमन नेम्स वी कम टू कम अक्रॉस आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ नेम्स they do include trojan backdoor virus and worms first we will discuss about what is a trojan trojan means it is actually it is one kind of virus we can say it is a virus but it is a special kind of virus which is which is classified as trojan then which type of program actually when we are discussing about virus or which is about a system attack then we have to define what is a virus and what is a program what is a software simple then i am going to elaborately in layman form we can say that if we are if we are writing different or certain kind of codes or a number of codes or line of codes to give a output or to perform some task then we can say there is a program or when there is a bundle of programs it united it is called a software that means the purpose of a software is the wise or it is for good will of the people or good will of the society but when the same software is developed for to attack or to for malicious purpose or to um, for um, for the to harm the people to harm the system then we can say it a virus or different kind of things now what do you mean by trojan <clears throat> trojan is special kind of virus actually trojan comes from a greek word greek is a troy there is a um, there is a movie also starring brad pitt its movie name is also troy it is actually there was a kingdom it is the, i am going to explain how the actually trojan works actually there was a kingdom when the attackers tried to attack the kingdom the king they were actually failed to attack the kingdom at the end of the time they they came up with a new plan what is the what was their plan they built a big horse big horse and put that horse in front of that kingdom or in front of the gate of the kingdom then the inside the king he thought that he actually they are more in a they are in a more of compromising and the king thought that he is he is giving us a gift so that's why the the king opened the door and welcomed the horse into the kingdom then actually what was the, into the pot i can say into the pot the what was the role but what are the actual intention of the attackers actually the size of the horse was so big and the any on the soldiers were placed inside that horse big horse in 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 that horse at the night time at the midnight the soldiers came out of the horse and attacked the fort that means in this situation when the attackers failed to breach the gate or breach the security system they 
they behave as they are give to the system or to the kingdom then when the kingdom or king accepted that dream they they come up, came up with their the real face and the attack they attack the kingdom this is this is the same way how the trojans attack the system in the means when a software when we are going to install a software the trojans comes with that software and it behaves like it is a software or it is a useful thing to the system and the system administrator or system security firewall accepts this gift because it um, because the system firewall or system administrator th thinks that it is a gift to our system it will it will be useful but when the after the as after the acceptance of the uh, of the gift or after after the acceptance of the uh, software that is actually malicious software after some time that will um, starting to harm the system actually actually what is the total procedure at the first when at the first time or first time it will behave as a gift and the second moment it will attack the system this is the whole procedure of trojan so that's why the trojan is a very very dangerous thing to a system because at, at the first time it will act like a gift and at the next moment it will act like a traitor that's why it is a very big problem to a system and in the first place when it acts as a gift the system administrator fails to detect that what well, is it harmful to our system or not actually this is the problem with the trojan and the name comes from the that toy toy kill or you can say the toy kingdom that's why it is called trojan horse trojan horse we can say trojan horse because the enemy the, the soldiers were placed inside that or that was it's called trojan horse also it's all trojan then different types of trojan what are the different types of trojans present in our system there is remote access trojan data sending trojan destructive trojan denial of service trojan proxy trojan ftp trojan and security software disabled trojan that means as i'm going to discuss what is a remote access trojan remote access trojan means when it trojan installed in when it Trojan is successfully installed in a system. It gives a remote access to the attacker. It gives a remote access to the attacker that the attacker can remotely control the system, and he can use any type of port. There are different types of virtual ports. He can use any port to damage that system. He can use that port, or he can use that communication remote access to steal the data. That's why it is called remote access Trojan. Because the main main work or main job of that trojan is to give a remote access to the attacker. Then data sending trojan. The data sending trojans are that type of trojan that collects the data and it works like a malware and that collects the data and send the data to the attacker in a secure port, in a secure manner, secure manner. But when the question comes, is the system administrator able to detect this kind of trojans or detect this kind of communication? Yes. But how I am going to explain this in, in, coming, in coming topics? Okay. Then the next type of next type of trojan is is destructive trojan. What do you mean destructive trojan? Destructive trojan are main the main work of destructive trojan is to delete the files, delete the selected some batch files, and system files, or we can say files inside the system thirty two folder or in a in a war dll file these are these are the kind of files or so different components of the software when the process uh, process of the trojan completed we can see that the software is not running system there will be lack in software boot up or os boot up we can say that there will be a fluctuation in software the output of software will 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 not be good as as expected or, or we can say that there will be a glitch in the software these, these are different kind of harmful things will be will be done by the destructive trojan denial of service trojan what is denial of service right actually it is called denial of service denial of service means actually what is denial of service suppose i have a system i am i am the authenticated user of that system but as if at its time i am unable to use my system then it is a denial of service because i have the authenticated username and password i am the authenticated user but still i am unable to do use my system that is called denial of service it is it can be created by trojan it can be created by different types of hacker in online system because for example uh, we can say that suppose um, the attackers community 
decided to attack the so online SBI platform. For example, then why, how will they do the on denial of service attack? Actually, actually, when we are whenever we are contact, contacting or we are accessing the website, we are going through internet, and the internet speed varies from user to user. And generally, we have we have a limit, limited capacity of one Mbps to two Mbps. Generally, Geo is providing to ten to twenty Mbps. I am not talking about Geo Fiber. Okay, but the attacker they have having a high speed. Then when the attackers will decide that we have to attack this website or this servers at a particular time, then they will fix up time. Then will then they will fix up time, and the, at that particular time they will ping that website. Actually, whenever they so actually whenever service is provided by the server server or or so website is hosted on a server, there is actually limit how many actually ping or how many hits that website can tolerate at a particular second or particular millisecond. If that hit exceeds the particular limit, then the server may crash also. But suppose mm, suppose the online SBI.com can handle one thousand or two thousand requests for um, for millisecond or per minute or per second. There is a criteria. But when the community community or the attackers community have decided we have to attack this, this server at this time, they will start, they will ping the system, ping the server with the with the high speed internet and after that, what will happen? The legitimate user having the proper username or password, he cannot access the system because it will show any type of network traffic, any type of network traffic or some kind of page is not available. This kind of error he will get. This is kind of denial of service attack. I have given one example that different types of example. Impersonating is also another kind of denial of service denial of service of trojan that means what is the denial of service? in this trojan the trojan suppose i have a credential whenever i am accessing to a system i have a i have some credential to access that system that means user and password and mm, password and whenever i am giving the user and password it is authenticated the authenticated the very or verifying the my password to the password which is actually set before mm, or at the priority at the starting time and if the password matches what is the password I am giving and what is the password stored in the database with both the password matches, then it is allowing me to access the system. But in kind of Trojan, it will go and change the authentication or authorization limits. Or you can say the, uh, say the, what is my credential? It will change my credentials. It will change the credential of different users. So that if it's user also having a proper username and password, he cannot access the system. If you are able to also access the system, he cannot perform the certain duties or certain jobs. That means, suppose I have there the, are the different types of author, uh, uh, authorities like read, write, delete, different kind of operation we can do. But if the Trojan attacks, he can change a write of write command from um, write command for a user. Then after if the user has priorly had the write command to that file, after the Trojan attack, he cannot write that file. This kind of we call this kind of attack is called denial of service Trojan. Okay. <clears throat> then <clears throat> what do then mm, then there is an overt and covert channel. What do you mean overt and covert channel? Covert channel, overt and covert channel means whenever there is a communication takes place between the system and the attacker system. That means whenever the Trojan is installed in the system, it will create a remote access to the attacker and it will create it will use a communication channel. Then this type of channel is called overt and covert channel. What do you mean covert channel? An overt channel is the normal and legit legitimate way that program communicates with the computer system on a one that means over is a, is a legitimate channel but proper channels really on techniques called as tunneling 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 what do you mean tunneling generally we, we come across tunneling in kind of vpn vpn in the vpn system we use tunneling tunneling means there is a secure channel secure channel means secure channel between the system and the attacker system because attacker is accessing their system in a, from a remote location that it must have a must have a tunnel so that the system administrator or the victim, the system administrator of the victim system cannot detect the, that there is a communication is going between the attacker and the system. That's why they use cover channel. That uh, only giving a, only using a cover channel is not sufficient. We have to use wrap, wrapping. What do you mean wrapping? Wrapping of a software packages that can be used to deliver a trojan. That, that means when a <coughs> 
whenever a trojan is delivered or trojan is giving an access to an attacker system that must be wrapped inside the software that means simple thing actually we are not actually in, the, in some kind of things we are not actually installing the trojan if you are asking that why we are going to are you using the software's legitimate way or in a proxy way that means whenever we are installing a software then what, what is the first we are doing we are going to any internet site and we are searching for that software and generally in different type of softwares or different type of software provider sites they are they are asking to us to create the username login account or they are asking for different kind of payment and to bypass that kind of system we are going for the third party third party software service providers or the web third party websites they are providing the service software and that time the, we are downloading the software and after the software we are not verifying that it is the legitimate software or not and after that software is installed actually trojan is inbuilt or trojan is built wrapped inside that software that means trojan is hidden we can say that trojan is um, hidden in, the, in that software that means when we are installing that software trojan is automatically installed it is generally comes with our games different kind of softwares kind of kind of idm activation software we can hear they are providing this is idm activation software windows activation software and different type of activation software general key and crack key key gen key rar these are the different kind of softwares in which the actually trojans are embedded into them okay <clears throat> Okay. Then, whenever the uh, system administrator checks that it is, it is a game or a software or a, any kind of good software or bad software, so he, it will it cannot detect the trojan because it is wrapped inside that software. So, so why the wrapping is used to deliver the trojan or to create a secure channel? Okay. Trojan construction kit. On what are the different trojan constructions? Actually, we can create the trojan trojan. Trojan virus. It is simple. We can use a notepad file also to create also a Trojan virus. But it is actually difficult. It's difficult to deliver that Trojan to a system. It is not easy. It's easy part to give a Trojan to that system. We have to trap that system. We have to trap the user of that system to accept that thing. Because because of, suppose I am giving an example. Okay, I have installed an IDM. Whenever I am trying to IDM, I know actually who, who are using IDM, they know that I in one to two days IDM will say, give a pop-up box like your IDM is IDM has registered with a fake serial key or legitimate. Please purchase the software and enter the credentials. This kind of pop-up box will give. Then what we are going to do? We are giving we are searching for a key gen or automatic software update or internet. Uh, universal crack manager these are different kind of softwares we are using for that and i i have come across the different sites many a lot of sites who are providing the keygens but actually it is only two to a three mb files actually two to three mb files. when the file is only two to three mb file it is impossible for the user to see to detail whether it is a crack key or a key, keygen software or a trojan hot software it is very much impossible I have also trapped in different cases because as a lack of hit and trial method, we are using that kind of software that it is a hit and trial method. So this is the first thing. That means whenever you are using a software, installing a software, it must be verified. And it, when the Trojan is inside the software, it is kind of impossible thing to detect that software. But yes, whenever actually in Windows 10, if you are using Windows 10, it may give some pop-up like it is a harmful software or harmful uh, and pull file or rar file please delete the software it may ask but we are we are very much eager to crack that software that's why we are going to install that software without considering the warning message of the operating system this is the first kind of trojan or this is the kind of trojan that is going to install then <clears throat> what is trojan evading techniques tibet what is trojan evading techniques first thing is that go backwards what is the trojan evading tactics so to evade the trojan or to stop to our system to be compromised by the attackers first thing first the two techniques we have to follow i have already discussed in the last class first the two thing, things we have to follow then whenever we are installing a software is must we must check what are the md5 value or hash value actually in every software set there is given an md5 value md5 means hash value i have already defined i have already discussed what is the hash value 
whenever there is a large chunk of file it is into it is given like input to a hash code or a hash function it will give a 512 m 512 bit of a code and this is unique for every input if there is a, there is a single change there is a change in one bit we can say one bit in the software the code will be changed so whenever we are downloading the software we can easily verify that the is the software is original or if there is a project present in that in that software or not from that hash value and we have to do this particularly before any type of installation is carried out in our system that's the first thing it is the first way it is the most important way or most general way to evaluate the projects okay then we are going to backdoors what do you mean backdoors backdoors mean whenever we are accessing any systems or whenever we are using any system there are different types of backdoors backdoors mean it is actually the actually backdoors are present in our in all the operating system in all the system but how to detect the backdoors how to install the backdoor if there is no backdoor how to install the backdoor it is the work of that work of that attacker who is going to attack the system oh. okay for example for example i have i have designed a software i am going to explain this i, I have designed a software or a um, online website okay and during that website i have created some backdoor why i have to create that backdoor because because i am giving a legitimate way because whenever why the actually developer do this kind of things actually developer do this kind of things because whenever there is there will be some some kind of payment com conflict payment conflict or some kind of this some kind of disturbance between the uh, from, be, be, between the developer and the um, and and the customer i can say the customer from for who is the software developers are developing the website they, that's why they put and backdoors in that all the systems actually there is a legitimate way whenever i am also developing different kind of software, i also put different kind of backdoors whenever they will try to um, try to ditch me or try to stop my payment i will use that backdoor to stop that software to stop that web server, web server or to website to work that's the my way up to to bargain the payment but that's the actual real scenario whenever we are when the, whenever the any victim whenever the victims backdoor is known to the attackers then the attacker will use that backdoor to attack the attack the system how they will do that for example for example i have in the last session i have i have already a discuss about one acre bus. actually one acre bus in the in case of one acre bus, the backdoor was also actually created by the microsoft but actually that backdoor was used by the attacker to create that one acre virus and attempt to encrypt the files and to go for the ask for the payment to decrypt the files this is the, this is the attack recent part before two, two to three years before two to three years there was this this kind of attack okay so there is what is the backdoor installation method? I am going to explain what is the backdoor installation method. What do you mean? There is the ActiveX. We can say now what is ActiveX. ActiveX it, it, actually it is a procedure or it is a advantage or it is a advantage of Windows operation. We can do different kind of ActiveX things like there is some suppose I am giving an example 3D Acrom. We just install 3D Acrom in our desktop. This is ActiveX. This is a pro, this is the advantage of ActiveX. We can say that the, whenever the VLC media player is running, we can set the player on the desktop. Set the player as the de as a desktop. This is also a work of ActiveX system. There are the different things that we can do with the ActiveX. But suppose we are installing an aquarium, 3D aquarium. I am specifying about 3D aquarium. So why we install a 3D aquarium and it has access to modify that ActiveX or use that active a microsoft might a security policy for protecting the system against the sticks that whenever then whenever we are installing that 3d aquarium actually there is a there is a score which will go to alter the active as program so we can use the active as to install the backdoor that means in this case also to install the install the backdoor they also the, the attacker also use the attackers use also the to install the software that means in inside of software there will be some code that will go to the active base or change the active use the active base of our windows system active is only present in windows i'm not saying about linux to use the active base to install a backdoor into the 
into the system. Now, what do you mean by backdoor? Actually, what do you mean by backdoor? Backdoor means actually in our system, there are different kind of ports are available. Suppose there are one to 4,000. All the ports are defined in related areas. That means the FTP is for FTP 21, one number port is assigned. For HTTP, 18 number is port is assigned. In this way, different port numbers are assigned to different communication process. That and there are also on utilize on utilize ports are also available in activist. How we can source that file? We can go simply to this PC in the this PC in the C drive. I'm saying about in the C drive. In the C drive, there will be a Windows folder. I am actually representing. I am going to present now. Present now option. We can see that entire screen. We can see that <clears throat> in the C drive, there is a Windows Windows file. In Windows, there will be a system 32 folder. System 32 folder. In the system 32 folder, there will be a folder drivers. It is the driver folder. In the driver folders, there will be a folder like etc. And it, we can say that these, these five, these five files are the most important file of the system to communicate in the out communicate communicate to the outside world. Like that, I am saying about one. I am going to open one file like protocol. Sorry. Okay. Is a protocols. Hosts. Okay. We can see that in the host file, if you are able to see the my screen, the I can see you can see that there is FTP twenty one TCP. That means 21 port is registered to FT, but we can see that 7, 9, there is no 10. Then there is, it is the port number, it is up to like 4,000. I can say that it is up to 5,000, it is 47,000. 47,000, 624. We can say that these are the different ports are used by different communication system. HTTP uses 80. We can say that here there will be HTTP 80 plus 80 TCP. That means HTTP will use 80 port number. FTP will use 21 port number. FTP data will use 20 port number. These are the different name server will use 42 port number. These are the different port numbers used by the communication system. Actually, whenever the communication will take place, it, it, it is actually it is the communication will take place through this kind of ports. So whenever the Trojan or we can kind of say that malicious software is going to <clears throat> going to communicate the, the the attacker is going to communicate the victim system, he will use one kind of one of the port that is not registered in this because. If, the, if this port is registered, he can you he can easily use that port, and the port will be monitored by the system administrator. But he will use a new port, new port, and the new port can be can be used or can be compromised. So, what is the role of the backdoor? The backdoor will create this kind of port, or port it will create this ports, this kind of use this kind of ports to communicate with the with the outer world. That means it's the first thing. Then I am going to what is the host? There is a, another file is host. They actually, if you, if you can see that there is a host file. Actually, you can see that what there is a different section written 127.0.0.1 is local host, and there are different kind of softwares. You can write that. You can see that it are these are kind of softwares I have written. Actually, in your system, these codes will not be present. Actually, I have put these codes to activate my IDM. It's the separate thing how to activate their item manually. I, I'm not going to explain these kind of things. Okay, these are the different kind of servers, different kind of server. That means what is the role of, of this host file? I'm saying that. Okay, actually, whenever the communication takes place, it goes through the host file. It, whenever this host file is linked, for example, for example, I can say that there is there is a port number 127.0.0.1. But this this represent if this with this IP address 127.0.0.1 represents the local host. This means local host of my system. Whenever I am going to ping this this IP address, it is not communicating with the outer world. There is a self loop. 
we can say that it is a self loop that means and the website is tonic.com and there is a register idm.com what do you actually what is the role of that that means whenever actually idm is installed in my system whenever the idm software will try to access the server try to access the server for verification of the serial key it will go to the suppose it is going to the internet download manager.com internet download manager.com but whenever the this this address will be accessed by the system it will give a self loop that means the, it will go into the 127 the digital ip will be 127.0.0.1 that means whenever the idm software will try to contact the internet download manager.com actually the request will not send to the internet download manager it, rather than it will be go on a self loop in my local host then what will be the result the idm will not be able to contact the server and my idm will work for like that this is the simple procedure i have put in this kind of thing but because it is a backdoor i can say it is a one kind of backdoor i have done in internationally to block the idm or to activate the idm but the same thing the same thing can be done by the by by any attacker by any attacker to the <clears throat> to attack the systems okay to the systems okay so how to pre prevent this kind of attacks we have if we want to prevent this kind of attacks we have to Stop. We have to verify any kind of software before installation. This is the simple trick. Okay. So, <clears throat> there are different types of there are cryptography also present. What do you, what is the use of cryptography? Cryptography actually is actually used to send the data in a secure channel from one node to another node. Actually, cryptography is used for the good purpose of the good purpose for the society or good purpose for the users for example there are different kind of cryptography techniques aes des rsa algorithm these are the different algorithm present idea ssl these are the different kind of cryptography algorithm present but what is the role of that algorithm actually the whenever we are sending any data the data is encrypted in a format that will that cannot be readable by any third person or if a is sent to a, a if a is sending some data to b then c cannot access the data because it has it doesn't have the key to decrypt the data so now what is the role of cryptography in this kind of hacking techniques so that means whenever the attacker is attacking the system and whenever the attacking the system then the command actually he will send some commands to run he, he will send some command to be run on the remote side or remote access or victim system but the command must be encrypted inside some cryptography text because if the attacker is not going to encrypt this this commands inside of some encryption technique that the system administrator can easily detect there is a communication or to disturb my system or delete command or there is a uh, delete command remove command or different kind of command is are running actually from the remote side the system administrator can detect or system firewall can detect this kind so that's why the attacker will use the cryptography technique to attack the cryptography technique to send the remote access or send the commands to the victim system. But whenever the attacker is using different kind of cryptography techniques, he is not going for build big software technique because SSL, for example, SSL. SSL is a big, very big encryption technique. It is not e easily decodable, but the attacker will use small techniques, small like AES, DES. Why you can ask that why he is going for only AESDS, not for SSL, IDEA, or big techniques? Because when the, if the data, suppose the data is 2 MB, if the data will be encrypted with a software like SSL, that data will become 70, 10 MB to 12 MB, then there will be a problem. Then the user, user of or utilization of the bandwidth of the memory or bandwidth of the communication channel will be easily be detected, it can be easily detectable by the system administrator. That's why to, to limit the size of the memory or limit the size of the command or after encryption, in the attacker will use simple AES technique or DES technique. It does communication, it does actually these parts, AES, DES communication parts are actually part of the cryptographic techniques. 
I'm actually due to time constraint, I'm not going to explain how, what are the different types of cryptography techniques. Simply, I'm explaining there are different types of cryptography techniques. There are two types. Generally, one is public key, another is private key. Okay. And what do you mean by public key and private key? That means, suppose there is a law, and that law can be opened by a key. This is a simple concept. There is a public key. The public in public key, whenever, suppose I am sending a data. Suppose A is sending a data to B, then A will A will lock that data or encrypt the data using a public key and send the data to B. Then what do the role of the B? B will decrypt the data. It can it only will be able to decrypt the data using that public key or using that single key yeah, that, that in, by which the data is encrypted. That means in encryption side and decryption side, if the same path of the same key is used, then we can say there is a public key cryptography. So again, I am repeating, if the, at the sender side and the receiver side, or in the encryption time or decryption time, actually same key is used for encryption and decryption, we can say it is a public key encryption. But what is a private key encryption? Private key encryption is kind of a complex thing. What is a complex thing? For example, Actually, whenever the key generated for private, there will be two key will be generated. Suppose there will be two key will be generated. That means, suppose there are two nodes are communicating, A and B are communicating. Then the key will be generated for both A and B. That means, for example, A is trying to send, the, send some data. Then the public key and private key will be generated for A. And same like that, the private key and public key will be generated for the B. Now, what are the role of the two keys? One key is public key, one key is private key. That is the same apply for the B. B has one private key and public key. Then what is the role of that key? Then public key can be given in public domain, but we have to keep that secret. Our private rule the key, keep the private key as a secret to me or secret to him. That means A will keep the secret key private key to him and private public key public key of a is public or in public domain likewise the two from the two kids one is private key of b it is kept to the b or it is kept kept by b and the public key of b it will be declared by b then what you have to what is the how the communication will take place then whenever a will try to send some data to b first first the data will be encrypted by the private key of A, by the private key of A, then the total data will be encrypted by the public key of B. What is the role of the public key and private key? I'm simply explaining that whenever a data is encrypted by a public key, it only can be decrypted by a private key and vice versa. That means if the data is encrypted by a public private key, then there will be can be only be decrypted by a public key. Simple thing. That means first A will encrypt the data using the private key of A and public key of B. It will send the data. And the, after receiving the data, the B will use its private key to decrypt. Then it will use the public key of A to decrypt. There will be encryption and decryption in two pages. Two pages. First, A will encrypt the data with the with the private key of its own then the public key of b send the data they will receive the data b will decrypt the key by the by its own private key after getting the result it will decrypt the data with the public key of a so we can say that there is a four process two for encryption two for decryption so the process will be lengthy the data will be heavy that's why the, in the generally backward system, the attacker does not use public key cryptography. The public private key cryptography, there is use only single key, single public key. They actually use only single public key. That means encryption and decryption will be done by a single key. It's a public key. Okay. <clears throat> okay. There is a hard how to access our how to send the data. We can use VPN also. VPN stands for VPN stands for virtual private network virtual private network means that will be a tunnel between the attacker and the victim system and he can send us the command and retrieve the data 
through the VPN channel, the simple meaning of VPN. Okay, then what do you mean root kit? Root kit means <coughs> okay. Last class also I have discussed what do you mean root kit. There are actually two kinds of root kits. One is first one is classic root kit, second one is kernel root kit. So what do you mean classic root kit? Classic root kit means actually the system actually when the system boots or system memory system when the system file load into the primary memory we can we, we said there is a boot, booting process so for the after the booting process the system fire will be activated and it can detect any kind of any kind of virus or any kind of key that is going to attack the system but if anyone want to change or if anyone want to attack he can attack the system before the OS or before the booting process or during the booting process that means there is a called root kit that means what is a root kit root kit will hide inside or it, it will go into the core part of the operating system it will go into the core part of the system and it will attack before the actually system is booted or equally actually the total system is activated to use or system is fully booted and we can use the system before that root kit will be attacked or root kit will be used that means in this root kit attackers replace bin or login file with another version that means suppose how the system windows is activated how the we are going to log in into the window first we are, we are going to hit the switch power button after the power button the bios will be displayed after the bios will be displayed it will go for the primary operating system after the prime um, it will take two minutes to load the primary operating system from the secondary memory to primary memory in that process after that process it will prompt some username and password system after the username and password is given the windows will be logged on and the firewall firewall will be on and we will we can use the system but what is the root of what is the use of the root kit root kit will go into the base base of the in the base or change the bin file or bin file or login file bin slash login file so what is the login file actually login file stores the username and password if the attacker is able to change that login file through some backward sort of backward, backdoor he can change the password after the after the change after the change after the attacker change the password the authenticated user will be also be not able to access that system that is the use of root key but what is a kernel root kit? Actually, kernel root kit replaces themselves with the kernel of the operating system. What do they, actually there is a layers of operating system first the, the part of the operating system which directly interacts with the hardware is kernel. That means the link between the hardware and the rest of the operating system is kernel. You can say that kernel is the base of the operating system. But what is a kernel root kit? Kernel root kit replaces themselves with the kernel of the operating system. In that case, you cannot trust anything in your system. You cannot trust anything because on the base file of the operating system, it changed. And with the kernel loops, all the process tasks, <coughs> network configuration, code number, content of fields, or any other things that you can believe is kind of PC. You cannot believe any kind of things. That is kernel root kit. <coughs> Okay, using different protocols and port numbers. I have already displayed different kind of port numbers or these kind of things. Protocols or port numbers to use this. I have already explained how to use that protocol and port number to access the uh, victim systems. Okay. How to protect the Trojan horse or how to protect our system from against the Trojan horse and backdoors? We can simply go for antivirus and signature. I have already explained what is antivirus when we, we both we all know what is antivirus. Suppose okay, actually leave, give me five, one minute. I am first. Okay, sir, okay. Sir, okay. Hello, sorry. Uh, there is some more season. <coughs> okay, what is antivirus? I am going to explain what is antivirus. Actually, antivirus is a program that that actually going to detect what are the backdoors or what are the trojans present in our system. But actually, is it able to really detect the 
back doors or trojans in our system actually it is no actually it is no because why i am explaining why i am explaining for example if this is actually the total whole process is actually it is a monetary process actually it is not written in the book i am explaining it it is actually monetary process that means whenever the attackers or whenever the attacker or the software developer or virus developer i can say that the virus developer whenever the virus developer develops a virus or creates a trojan or, or creates different kind of virus things then they are going they are using some patterns or we can say that there is different kind of structures structure present in that kind of system and actually they come up with a new structure a new backbone with every new virus every new virus so if our software database is not up to date with that kind of pattern with that with that pattern or with that back structure then our software will our antivirus software will not be able to that kind of project that means if that's why all in two to three days our antivirus system goes for update or ask for of this why because in every day that lot of developers they are developing the virus and they are using different kind of pattern a different kind of structures that different kind of structures then what are the role of the antivirus sub companies they are going whenever the attack is attack is made they are going to explore the virus explore the trojan they are going to read the pattern observe the pattern and they are creating the new pattern and creating the new pattern and gives the information data to our so in the antivirus software that this kind of patterns can be harmful for your system this is the use of uh, this is the actual job of the antivirus software whenever the main server of antivirus of the server is updated about the information of the pattern information about the back structure or the structure of the virus then that data will be updated in our system and after that only our system is able to detect detect the virus otherwise our system will not be able to detect the virus that means some of the students or some of the persons or friends ask me that if i i am using a antivirus system and that i am not updating it regularly is, is there any harm to my system yes because your antivirus system is protect it can protect your system for the existing virus there are that that those were developed before one month or one year but the current one year in the in this, in this time span those viruses are developed the, your antivirus system will not be able to detect those viruses it's important because every virus every structure every structure of that virus is different from one to another it's a simple thing okay actually why i call it a monetary service monetary thing because actually what happens whenever a developer first thing is why a person will Design a virus. Simple. I am developing a software to sell the software to some users. But why I develop a virus? If there is a no personal use or personal benefit to me, how why why I am going to develop a virus? Actually, the persons or the developers are developing the virus to gain profit from home, from the directly from the antivirus companies. Because simple thing, they what is the matter? They will develop the virus. they will give the key to the antivirus company up to 2 to 3 days then we are bound to purchase their antivirus software because in general to the general life all the users of windows or line i am most of some of our windows were not good. most of the things most of the softwares are pirated except one software that is antivirus one may not purchase any software one other all the 90% of the people are not purchasing any type of software except one for software that is antivirus so the developers develop virus antivirus companies purchase those to keep from the virus virus developers or um, virus developers and we are going to pay for the antivirus companies to use those use those antivirus software it is kind of circle of monetary circle okay actually it is on official it is not written in the book okay second thing is signature i have already about discuss about what is a signature md5 md5 signature hash algorithm these are the different kind of software so oh sorry these different kind of functions to generate a unique code or a hash code to verify a software is legit, legitimate or not okay these are the these are, these, are, these are the first these are the some topics i have covered then i am going for virus and owns so what do you mean by virus and owns 
Viral, what is the proof of viral? Vital information running under C is the simple definition of virus. The virus. So what is the attacks, attack the area of virus? We can say system sector files, macros, company file, sorry, companion files, disk cluster, batch file, source code. These are the different se sectors or different areas where the virus can attack. But how the virus are spread? Actually, there are different types of virus, polymorphic virus, tilt virus, fast show infectors, sparse infector, arm, armored, inf armored virus, multiparity virus, cavity virus, tunneling virus. Okay. Actually, these are the different kind of virus are classified into their categories, behavior, how they are going to infect the system, how they are doubling in that, or how they are spreading one from one system to another system, simple. Thing. But how the actual virus works? Actually, virus is a software. I can say that virus is also a software. But what is the difference between software and virus? Because whenever there is a software, suppose VLC is a software, then I have to install it. I have to install the VLC software to run it. But virus comes with an exception. It does not require any permission from the user. It installs automatically. It spreads automatically. Virus has two things. I have to transport the software, I have to install the software. But in, in case of virus, it installs automatically, it spreads automatically. It does not have any kind of, it does not require any kind of permission from the user. That's the simple thing the virus do. Although virus is also a command. We can write some commands. Simple thing, we can write some commands to delete the file, to modify the file. These, these are the commands present in our CMD or we can say that different, we can use active program to delete the files. Simple thing, but whenever we are writing, suppose I have written a C, uh, C program to delete some files. Then what are the two things to become the, that file to into virus? If that file is spread automatically from one system to another system and the virus will be, or the, the program will be installed automatically, that, that, I, uh, that I can say that I have successfully created a virus. Okay, these are the kind of virus things Okay, polymorphic virus. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then I have already, mm, I have already detected, already discussed how the antivirus works. But actually, how the virus is generated, or how the antivirus is, the antivirus going to detect the virus is important thing because whenever a virus is formed, actually they follow some path or some basic patterns simple some basic patterns and following that pattern only can only one is able to design a virus for example if you, are, if you want to execute to execute a file without a permission you need an auto run file you or you have already known what is auto run file auto run file means whenever you if you are plugging into a plug, there is there will be auto run file to run a video file on a pen drive whenever the pen drive will be inserted into a system the video file will be directly run. Simple thing, that is a, that is a um, use of auto run. That means if the virus contains any type of auto run command, if the virus can be copy, co copy command or different kind of commands, there is a, the pattern, if the pattern of the virus is similar to the previous virus, actually there are different 90% similarity. One virus is coming from another virus is 90% similarity. That's why our system, our antivirus is able to Detect the, detect the virus. If the virus structure, the virus backbone, backbone will be totally different, the antivirus will can, cannot, be, cannot de detect the virus. <coughs> okay. So how to understand the virus detection method? There are three steps. First one is scanning, integrity checking with checksums, and interception based on virus signature. And the, actually, the structure and the pattern is called signature of the virus. Okay. Now, what is a scanning? The um, scanning means antivirus will do the whole scan of the system. Scan of the system. After the scanning the system, it will go for checksum. Now, what do you mean checksum? Checksum is a procedure to detect if there is an alternation in any bit of the data or not. This is the simple procedure. Actually, checksum is also used in kind of some kind of communication process to send the communication. If any kind of communication process, if there is any change, any bit or alternation of any bit, then the checksum is easily detected. Then which bit is corrupted and how many bits are corrupted? Two things, 
how many bits are corrupted and which bits are corrupted. These are the two things that can be clarified by the checksum method. <clears throat> okay, then we are going for one or the what do you know? Or, or means or actually it is not a virus, or it is it is not actually as harmful as trojan or the virus, actually worms or like a, a file that travels from or the, that that is actually running in in the background and it collects the information we can say it is the it collects the information on space and actually it spreads from one file to another file and one software to another software we can say that but it actually it is not har harmful as compared to a virus and trojan trojan host and we can say that orm is a subclass of virus subclass of virus and what is the use of OM? OM, OM is actually used to gain the information or gain the access gain the access because virus attacks the system but if you want to access the remote access if you want any remote access or gain some command or send some file you can send the send them or will send the data from the victim systems to the attacker system this is the role of OM. And I have already I will discuss about Trojan horse. The, we have already briefly discussed what is Trojan horse or Trojan horse and or and virus. Then I am going to discuss what is session hijacking. Okay. Session hijacking. Before I am going to actually it is the second unit of um, second unit of your you what um, block two second unit of block two then first whenever i'm going to discuss what is session hijacking we have to know what is a session how the session works what are the role of cookies and what are the role of page and different kind of mechanism okay before going to actually going to discuss the session there are different two kind of protocols first one is connection less protocol second one is connection oriented protocol HTTP and HTTP are stateless protocol, connection less protocol. We can say that stateless protocol. Whether but FTP is a connection oriented protocol. Then what do you mean connection less protocol and connection oriented protocol? If suppose the, throughout the communication, suppose I am accessing any website and I have sending the HTTP request. That means whenever I am going to access any website or suppose osu.ac.in. I am simply writing the URL in the web browser and I am hitting the enter button. Then the HTTP request will be sent to the server and in the response that I will get some web page. That means how the communication takes place. The there will be a channel will be open or connection will be open from my system to the server. HTTP request will go and I will get the HTTP response. After getting the HTTP response, the connection will be closed. This is the simple thing. And what is the, the how the HTTP works or HTTPS works, but how FTP works? Whenever I am actually to use HTTP protocols, we are using browser like that. But if you are using FTP protocol, you have to use different kind of software present: QGILA, FileZilla. These are the softwares through which we can communicate through FTP protocols. Okay. Now, how the pro FTP protocols work? The same way, there is the same way. Suppose, how why the FTP protocols are used? Suppose I am developer of a website and I have to upload the total file or total developed file website to the server. Then I, I am going to use FTP. Through the FileZilla or FTQT FTP, I can send the, all the documents from my system to the remote system. In that process, I will create a communication link. After the communication is linked, the established, there will be there will be a con request and response continuous request and response. The connection will be open as long as I am going to forcefully close it. After the closing the connection, the connection will be closed. That's why it is called connection oriented. That means connection open and connection close are controlled by me. And be in between the connect in between that time, there will be a continuous communication between server and my system we can say http we can say request and response procedure is going on between my system to the server that's why it is called connection less protocol of course connection oriented protocol but http is a connection less protocol 
that means if the page is loaded into my system the server is there is no communication between my system to the server there is simply no communication why i am actually focusing i'm giving focus on that this part why there is no communication between my system to the server okay for example if you are going to open osu.ac.in on your web browser and leave the system for one day for one day there will be a single use of memory or single use of communication memory because there is no request response procedure is going on between the between the server and your system but then the question comes then the post real question comes facebook is also using session or facebook is also using https protocol or http protocol then it is also a connectionless protocol yes yes facebook also uses connectionless protocol then how if i am going to access the facebook after the facebook page is loaded into my system how do you know, how my friends are knowing that i am online or offline because if there is no communication between my system to the server then server will not be able to that whether i am online or offline if the server is on one way of the uh, is not aware of that whether i am is online or offline how the my friends those who are accessing the facebook how they are knowing that i am online on the chat box or not or i am using the facebook facebook or not no actually there is a simple technique called session now how how session is actually managed what is a session that means simple whenever i am suppose i am in from the beginning i am saying suppose i am using a facebook i am going to log into the system or sign into the system facebook account whenever there will be a signing in the facebook system or from system after i have given the proper username and password after giving the proper username and password authenticate username and password the server will create a session the server will create a session in the name of my id or in the id of mine there will be a unique id to every user and the, with the that id there will be a session will be created at the server and that server id each <coughs> that server id will be will be sent will be sent back to the system will be the server id will be sent back to the system and it is stored inside the cookie file of the system in the cookie file of the system that means again i am explaining the procedure whenever i am giving the username and password if the i have given proper username and password the server will create a session with a user session id and the session id or session i session id will be created that, that is created at the server side it will be returned it will be written to me and it will be stored in the cookie file of my system then the next time then in the next time whenever i am accessing the facebook it will go the request with the http request go with along with the cookie file that means the cookie file that is stored in my system it will go with that request file with the request file and whenever the session will whenever the server will see that the session is present or the session is present it will not ask to enter the enter the username and password that's why if after logging into the facebook after i have restart or shut down the system again i am going for the facebook login it is not prompting to ask the username and password it is directly redirecting to the home page of the facebook because there is a session present i have not destroyed the session or not destroy the cookie because the cookie is present in my system and cookies hold the session name or session details then we can say that cookie is important in the session hijacking so that means cookie is important in the session hijacking okay. then how to use how to session can be tracked session can be tracked session can be this procedure is done in three ways three ways that means first one is cookie second one is url rewriting third one is hidden field i have already explained how the cookie works but what is url rewriting url rewriting means whenever actually whenever developing a website we use url rewriting to redirect from one page to different page from one page to different page url rewriting is used 
and what is the use of hidden field i am going to explain how the url editing is used to exploit the uh, session hijacking now what is the hidden field actually in the form html form there is a there is a field name hidden input type hidden we can say that we can use angular bracket input type hidden we can use hidden field now, what is the role of the hidden field? actually hidden field is used to hide the session id or present the hide that means in the page that we are looking suppose in the form we are looking username password field where the hidden field will be hidden be, that means the hidden field have some value and it will be hidden from us we cannot see the hidden field from naked or from from directly we can direct we can't directly see the hidden field or the value of the hidden field we have to go to the source code of the hidden field the source code of that web page that's why the hidden field is used so hidden field is used to secret or to uh, secretly that data send the data from one node to another node secretly okay. the what is session hijacking session hijacking means if there is an active session between the server and the system if any third person comes and tries to access that session without without creating a new username and a password then that is called session hijacking means that means there is two way i can access a web access a one facebook account one is if i am gaining the username password of that account i can access the facebook account otherwise i have to use a session now, how to use the session i have to use the cookie how to use the cookie? it is not use the it is not easy, easy to that you are going to get a cookie from a system and you have to be going to decrypt and getting the session id and we are going to that session id to log into the account no it's not that easy but there is some procedure you can do that but it can only be done it can only be done if the if from the developer is not aware that means i have in the last session i have already explained the mistakes can be done by two sides by the user or by the developer and it only happens if the developer is not aware or if the developer makes any mistake there will be a session hijacking means suppose suppose the facebook server is not encrypted and there is no session and there is no proper secret that means suppose you, you are using facebook in a cyber cafe there will be can there will be hello one second i'm getting a call hold for one minute Okay, learner, if any question, then you can write on chat box. So we can ask to sir at last, at last of the session. Bhave, sir. Yes, sir. Ha, ah, audible, na? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. okay. Learner, man, karo jodi kichi question achi, se mane chat box re lekhi parive. सेशन लास्ट रे आमे सार को पचारिया गोटे गोटे ओके ओके सर ओके सोहन सरंकर म्यूट अछि सर अनम्यूट करिवे ओके 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 सपोज सपोज अ यूजर इज एक्सेसिंग अ फेसबुक एक्सेसिंग अ फेसबुक फ्रॉम अ साइबर कैफे देन एट द टाइम ऑफ एट द टाइम ऑफ लॉगिन फॉर सपोज वन यूजर इज लॉगिन टू द फेसबुक एंड एट द टाइम द सेशन आईडी विल बी क्रिएट एंड इट विल बी स्टोर्ड इन द कुकी बट at the time suppose the user forgot to sign up from that account then the set of session will not be destroyed if the session is not destroyed in that cyber cafe if the next user comes to that to that system to access his facebook account then it will send the same cookie 
सेम कुकी टू द सर्वर एंड द सर्वर विल सर्वर एक्चुअली द इफ द डेवलपर इज मोस्ट एवर और मोस्ट इंटेलिजेंट दे कैन डिटेक्ट दैट दिस कुकी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस कुकी एंड द यूजर इज डिफरेंट बट इफ द प्रोवाइडर इफ द डेवलपर मेक्स एनी मिस्टेक मे दे आर मेकिंग एनी मिस्टेक देन दे द सर्वर कैन नॉट डिटेक्ट दैट द कुकी कम कमिंग recently it is same as the cookie used by the previous user that's why in that case in that case the new user will will can be able will be able to access the user account of the previous user this actually this case only can only happen this case only happen if the developer makes any mistake it is not the fault of the user i'm again explaining that it is not fault of the user actually the user of the fault is the fault of the user is he has not sign out but the second problem was created by a second mistake was done by the developer both side has made some made some mistake first one is the first one from the user side a second one from the server side now how to prevent this kind of session hijacking session hijacking to prevent this kind of session hijacking the developer must use ssl encryption only for login page ssl encryption for login page that means what is ssl ssl means secure socket <clears throat> secure socket layer login secure socket layer encryption techniques uh, um, today in the recent era we are using 1024 bit ssl encryption these are using different these, these things are used by different uh, um, online banking systems or different banking systems what do you mean these things and kind of stuff i'm going to explain it suppose it actually it is not suppose it is actually fact if previously before 1024 bit ssl encryption there was a 128 bit ssl encryption used by different websites and there was a study that revealed that if a software computer is engaged to decrypt a file which is encrypted through as 128 bit ssl encryption it will take nine sorry six months it will take six months to decrypt a data file that is encrypted with 128 bit ssl encryption after that you no know, study all the banking systems changed their encryption techniques from 128 bit ssl encryption to 1024 bit ssl encryption and the banking societies made it compulsory to change your username sorry change your password after 3 months of interval this why after the study was revealed that after 6 months a super computer not our gen, genuine system it cannot detect that or de cannot decrypt that ss and so a super computer is needed so after a super computer decrypts that it 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 may take a month of 3 months but that's why the online banking sites are uh, forcing us to change our password after 3 months all the banking sites all the online transaction are forcing us to change the password after 3 months because this kind of lagging and all the login pages login pages are css encryption because after the ss encryption all the things all the session keys or we can say the cookies are traveled by that encryption key so then then the cookies will be encrypted and cookies will be set first thing is that second thing thing is that whenever there must be a timeout session it is a, it is also a, it is also a, um, important it is also important from the developer side there must be a timeout because you know, whenever they were using facebook there is no timeout but whenever you are using online banking system if the system i goes for ideal for 32 to sorry 15 to 20 minutes it will show and message your session is expired there must be present because after that such that there must of time the both the session key session that is created at the server side and the cookies created at your server their cookies present at your system that both will be vanished or that ball will be destroyed otherwise the system will be the, the session id will be present or session id will be active that's why there is a timeout timeout system timeout system for every online banking transaction system the second thing is single url is enough to enable the hijacker what do you know url i have already discussed how to how to gain access from a url that means if you are providing any url from a for example i am explaining this in lemon form suppose in facebook we are a coming across different kind of advertising things whenever we are going to click that advertisement it is actually that from one side to second secondary sites in the secondary sites actually it create it, it asks for our facebook login 
the bot who don't have to give any facebook login in the third third party sites because if if there is a contact between the third side and the facebook side facebook will be aware of that and facebook will directly give the access but it will not ask the user to give the credentials no so if that that third party sites are asking for any url copy paste then the you from the url copy paste thing it can get the cookie or different kind of information to get into the ses get into the session because the session is active and the next request will be active so from the that request i'm saying about url request url writing then that will be um, the information will be sent to the uh, attacker so that's why if anything comes across facebook like everything and everything um, asking for url copy paste then go don't don't go for it first second thing is and third thing is that don't go for the cyber copy for using any type of um, online transactions or do any type of any kind of secure um, secure things or facebook kind of things and after anything you have to destroy the session that that means log out the thing if you are not going to log out the session will be present or session will be active and that will be very uh, critical okay <clears throat> okay i have already discussed and another thing is that how to do if you are an attacker how to how you can do that the if there is a different kind of thing for example how i can attack how can i can attack a victim or i can attack my attack user i have to go to the site visit to the site i will create a session id and the, i whenever i session id i will send the session id in, through any kind of social engineering to my friend and whenever my friend clicks that social session id it will be redirect to the server to in any way that means we are creating a trap simple in simple terms we are creating a trap for the um, for the user to be trapped and whenever he will trap he will use my session id and that means the session id is created by me then that id will be known to me and i can get that session through that session id to that session there is a simple you know, cookie you know, session hijacking okay that then another another type of which called cross site scripting <clears throat> then what do you mean cross cross site scripting cross site scripting means that is a javascript or javascript actually java whenever a javascript means <coughs> javascript means there is a some kind of script we can write we can write or oh, we can write i have already we can write some different kind of codes and send to the user through email attachment or or through any kind of social so, social engineering and that kind of thing or that script will enable i have already discussed what is a javascript javascript is client side code and javascript actually collects all the information of a system to explore the system if i am going to you going to create a javascript file and that is sent through an email attachment to an victim system i can get a session id also cookie also that is also possible in cross site scripting okay okay that is the different kind of session hijacking <clears throat> and we have to go for log log out session okay there is different kind of two types of session hijacking one is active session hijacking another is passive session hijacking Active session hijacking, passive sorry, passive passive session hijacking means I am just giving a trap and I am waiting for the time whenever the user is going to be trapped. But in the active session, I am going for denial of service or distributed denial of service in this kind of attacks to hijack the session. These these are the two types of attacks: passive attacks and active attacks. I have already discussed how to hijack a system. Okay, it is the all about your oh, it's a HTTP ID already discussed. It is all about the sex chapter two, chapter two of your block two, and the next chapter is social engineering. Actually, it is there is time limit. I cannot cover social engineering part in this this one. Okay. If anyone any any doubt, oh, you can okay, ask. sir. Thank you for a great session. So there are some question from student side. Yes, sir. I will ask one by one. First, okay. uh, one simple question: Antivirus company can antivirus company develop virus? 
Trojan will be hidden inside of software. Whenever I'm going to install that software by the side, by the along of the side, the Trojan will be installed and it will go in for the harmful. Basic thing is Trojan, why it is called Trojan? In the first case, it will act as a gift, and the second phase, it will act as, act as a harmful. That's why it is called Trojan. Okay, sir. Next question: if user sign out, log out, okay. whether the cookies are still storing the login credential of last user no if the no, uh, no. after after the log log out the, after the user has log out or sign out from the system the session the session thing will be destroyed in the server whether your cookies present maintains the id or not it is not very good because the one of the session is destroyed your id is invalidated or it is not validated Whenever the next time it will, it will, the ID will be sent to the server, it will simply say your session is over, go for the next thing, or re-login for kind of thing, it will appear. Okay, sir. Okay, dear learners, if any questions, you can ask directly by unmuting your mic. Otherwise, we will conclude our session. I think there is no question. So, okay. sir, again, I will thank to you. Okay, sir. And uh, uh, we will continue in next class. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavesh, sir, for your technical support. And thank you, learners, for your cooperation and learning silently. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we will conclude the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Today's thank session you. is closed here. Okay, sir.